Hey there, how's it going? This is Cross the Rubicon Channel. What's a day today? The date is the 24th of August. I'm just sitting in Richmond in my daughter's place and I thought I'd make a video because, well, I'm really concerned for New Zealand and, it's, and the way it's going and how people ignore certain issues in New Zealand that I think are very, very very important in fact a lot of people think it's very important but unfortunately because it's to do with maori people choose to ignore it and brush it under the carpet or pretend it's not happening and i think it should be talked about and it should be talked about by everybody because it concerns everybody and that's hey poor poor three waters in new zealand which comes down from the united nations the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And the New Zealand version of that is Hei Pua Pua. And another form of Hei Pua Pua that adds on to it is Three Waters. Now Hei Pua Pua was written by the Mahuta family. Now they're just elite, super elite Maoris. Very, very high up in government and married them. Now, these people have been allowed, I'm talking about elite Maoris now, but especially the Mahutas, <clears throat> they've been allowed by Jacinda Ardern and the Labour government to write this document, and it completely favours Maori. It's been accepted by the United Nations as fair and good and right. Hey Pua Pua basically hands over co-governance to Maori by the year 2040, which celebrates 200 years of the signing of the Waitangi Treaty. So somewhere between 14 and 16% of the population are going to get 50% of control of New Zealand. And that's basically, they're going to get their own parliament, Maori, and they will be unelected and the other 50% will have to be elected by the normal democratic process. And there's nothing to say, nothing to say that Maori can stand, Maori candidates on the other half, the other half of the 50% democratically elected half. So that means their 50% could go up to 60, maybe 70% control. Now, in New Zealand today, it's just a fact, and this is nothing to do with racism. In fact, the racism is on elite Maori side and separatist, fundamentalist Maori side. It's not from me. I'm actually pointing out racism, which they accuse as being racist, because that's the only tool they have of shutting people like myself down, is by calling me a racist all the time. New Zealand's going to a very, very, very dark place. And because Jacinda pays the media in New Zealand now, $55 million a year, plus hundreds of millions in advertising, with a caveat that they're supposed to support everything. Not supposed to, but they shall support everything she says and does and they support that the Treaty of Waitangi was a partnership, which it wasn't. It's just a fact. It wasn't a partnership. The Treaty of Waitangi basically, basically gave Maori the rights and privileges of British citizens. That was it, basically. The treaty stopped the perpetual state of wars, slavery and cannibalism in New Zealand. That was happening all over New Zealand. The treaty stopped all that. The British actually stopped all that. Now in New Zealand, 14 to 16% of the population marry. Every single one of them, every single one of them, without exception, are only part marry. There are no full blood marry. There'd be very, very few, if non existent, half marry. 
And even if you've got a little bit of Mary in New Zealand, and I'm talking, if I can make the analogy of a bucket of paint, a gallon of white paint, and you put in a drop of black, a drop of black paint in that white bucket or white gallon of paint, you can basically call yourself black paint. Honestly, that's, that's the insanity of where we are in New Zealand. And you're considered Maori and you get all these privileges. Now, Maori elites, Maori politicians, Maori tribes, iwi, they always, they are always beating the drums for Maori are so disadvantaged. There's nothing further from the truth in New Zealand. Maori get everything. They get everything. They have done for years. They are not disadvantaged. The only ones that are disadvantaged are the ones who disadvantage themselves by their own actions. Now, what I'm saying now will be controversial to some, and some will say, without thinking, just call me racist, because they're not used to hearing it. Because you're prevented from hearing it. Like I said, the media is fully supportive of all things Jacinda and all things Maori elite. Whatever they want, whatever they say, whatever they do, the media will always back them. And I think it has to be stopped because, well, the other 85% or so of New Zealand who are non-Maori are not getting any say in this at all. All this is being discussed basically behind closed doors. And it's been decided behind closed doors by radical extremist Maoris who are elite Maoris, very wealthy indeed. And I have to say a corrupt globalist WEF backed government. And that includes Jacinda Ardern. Now the reason I make this video is that next year is going to be an election, next November I think it is. And there's no doubt at all that Christopher Luxon is going to be the next Prime Minister. I believe he's already been shoulder tapped, he's already been told by them who control elections nowadays. And that sounds controversial and a conspiracy theorist, I know that. But I don't believe it, I believe they are controlled. And people are told beforehand if they're going to win or lose before voting even starts. <coughs> Pardon me. But Jacinda has probably already been told that she's out next year and Luxon is in. Now Luxon, if he's been shoulder tapped already, he knows it's already corrupted. Jacinda already knows. And Jacinda will go off to another nation. She won't be able to stay here. She won't stay here at all. She'll go off to the Cayman Islands with a, a fortune, I have no doubt, a fortune, while New Zealand burns behind her. In the rear view mirror, if you like, although she's going to be on a plane, hypothetically speaking. But Christopher Luxon will carry on the destruction, the wrecking ball to this nation of what Jacinda started. Now, this was all started many, many decades ago. But Jacinda has really speeded it up and Luxon will either be the same as or probably even worse than Jacinda, I believe. I don't believe the ACT Party have got any answers. I believe they're bought and paid for too. I believe these other parties, these smaller parties that are making news, especially on social media, uh, political parties and political movements, me, myself, no, I don't support any of them because I think there's, pardon me, other agendas there. And um, Greens, just communists and radical extremist Maoris in the Greens as well, and the Maori Party. By definition, the Maori Party is a racist party. So there's, there's really no one, no one you can vote for, I believe. And... And there's other parties, but no one seems to want to talk about Hey Pua Pua Three Waters. 
no one. And they won't even mention the fact that Heipuapua Three Waters is a Maori takeover. A takeover of government, basically, in New Zealand. And it's been enabled by Jacinda. And it's going to give huge, huge um, power to these elite Maori. Now, Hei Puapua itself is, if you read it yourself, take a look yourself. You've got to read it. It's going to give Maori in the street, not elite Maori, not just elite Maori, but Maori on the street on my level, more rights and privileges than non Maori. Voting privileges and their voice will carry more weight than anybody else's. And they will get certain rights to employment, first dibs on all kinds of employment, and all kinds of apartheid is going to be happening in New Zealand. And, you know, apartheid was a bad thing in South Africa, but now it's a good thing in New Zealand. And like I've said re recently, uh, the New Zealand paradox, I've called it myself, I coined the phrase, the New Zealand paradox, where calling out racism is actually perceived as an act of racism by racists, real racists, in the Maori party, and at the very top of a Maori tree. You know who these people are. Now, I think these political parties now, right now, right across the board, should be shouting from the rooftops about Hei Pua Pua Three Waters because I think it's a real, real dangerous thing to New Zealand. Now, people have different opinions on what's worse, whether it's Hei Pua Pua Three Waters or the, we know all about that, and lockdowns and all the other things that have been happening over the last two, two odd years. But I think Hei Pua Pua, Three Waters, is really, could really, push this country into civil conflict. I really do. And I think it should be stopped by all means. But it won't be, because people just aren't informed about it. They don't want to know, they want to look the other way, because for some bizarre reason, it's about Maori, and they feel... I don't know, are they feel embarrassed or ashamed to call it out because it's Mary and say, and say she'd be right kind of thing. I met a person the other day and I spoke to this person about this, a very strong-minded, strong-willed person. And um, I mentioned this and we had, I wouldn't say it was a heated discussion, but it was, uh, that person had strong views and so did I. And that person said, well, I haven't got a problem with Mary having co-governance. Now, now that person was non marry And uh, but she said, I've said just she now. She said she hasn't got a problem with it, basically. And, um, and I just shake my head. So basically, she wants, she, she believes it's okay for a political party or co-governance, 50% of the governance of this country, to be handed over to a particular race of people who have got a little bit of Maori blood in them, purely based on their skin colour. And yet, I'm sure she would be totally against it in any other nation, but here, she's for it. Um, I think she speaks for many, many Kiwis. Now, I know leaders of political parties who uh, see me as controversial, a controversial figure, and they won't touch me with a barge pole because of things I say. Basically, what I've just said in the last, what, 14 and a half minutes. I don't say it because I'm a racist. I say it because it's true. It's what's happening. It's news and real reporting that you're, that's been hidden away from you. It's been hidden away deliberately by the government and the media. And they are carrying this through. New Zealand is in the middle of a coup. 
right in the middle of it. These Maori elites are taking over governance of this country and they're taking everything. Free waters, every river, every lake, hydro power station, snow on the mountains, the rain that falls from the sky, the ocean from the high water, tide mark to 12 nautical miles out all around New Zealand. That, that includes the beaches are going to be owned by Maori. And hardly anybody knows about it because it's been hidden by Jacinda and her fully paid up media. And her fully paid up media will attack people like me for telling you this. They'll just call me a racist and a far right white supremacist. <sighs> Even though they know it's true. What do we do? What can we do? If we can't vote for anybody that won't even talk about it now, how are we going to solve this? I believe... I believe we knew we need... <laughs> I know, this is controversial. I believe we need a new party that's going to be very passionate, non-PC, and they're going to be shouting all about this. And they're going to condemn it all the way. That's what I really believe. Because, let's face it, all these parties now are pretty mealy-mouthed. And they're just middle of the road, too afraid, too afraid to rock the boat. And they don't want any controversy. And they're terrified of the media. And they want to win power, get into power, by just being in the middle of the road and not attracting any negative media attention. Can you really trust anyone that won't speak up now? And when they get in power, do you think they're going to change? I don't think they will. I honestly don't think they will. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how to fix this. I wish I did. Well... The only way I can see it is a real political party with real strong leaders who will say it and will call out the media. When they're interviewed by the media and they're called whatever by the media, and they would be, then they turn it on that journalist right there, right then, and call them exactly what they are, paid propagandists. But no one, no leader of any party or movement will actually say that to any journalist. When in fact it's true. I would. I would call a journalist. I would call any Maori leader. You know their names. I don't need to name names. I would relish the thought. Of taking these people on. In any kind of debate. But they won't entertain me at all. There's a reason for that. Because I don't fear them. I don't fear them at all. I take them head on and say what needs to be said. And that is a very, very rare commodity in New Zealand. As rare as hen's teeth, as you know. And New Zealand, it hasn't got one single politician that will say it. Not one. That's a real problem for this nation. So let me know your thoughts of what needs to be done. Either take over an existing party, somehow, next to no chance of that, or start a new one for people who are lost in the wilderness, completely lost. They don't know where to turn, and there's a lot of people like that. They don't know where to look, because no one represents them. No one is talking about, hey, poor, poor, being a iwi corporate, or hey poo poo three waters, an iwi corporate takeover of all things water. No one is saying that. No one is saying it's a iwi or tribal takeover of all things water worth billions. No one will actually say it. I was told by one politician a couple, a couple of three months ago. 
I asked this politician, why don't you say it's an EB corporate takeover? And that person said, we're not allowed. We're not allowed to say that. We've just got to say corporate takeover. Why would they say that? And who's telling them they're only allowed to say corporate takeover, not an EWI corporate takeover? Which it is. It's a fact. You tell me what you think. Because I'm putting it on the line here. I'm telling you, well, I have been for a long time, what's happening. And people attack me all the time. Not many, but I do get attacks. Personal attacks, ad hominem attacks. But it's water off a duck's back. I would relish taking these people on. And there's not one single politician in Parliament that will take these bullies, and they are bullies, these radical extremists right at the very top of government. No one, not one single politician will take them on. Not one. And not one will take on the media or take on Jacinda and call her for what she is. I would. And I'd love it. Anyway, this is Across the Rubicon channel. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe, share my videos everywhere, and tell me what you think in the comments. Because it's important. And any abuse or anything like that, I'll just, I'll just block you. And uh, I'll take away your comment. But this debate has to be had. It really has to be had. Because we're not allowed to talk about it. Because of the government and the media. Because we live in a corrupt nation. That I care about. And I've got skin in this game because I've got grandchildren here. And it worries me. Okay. Like I said, please share, like, leave a comment and subscribe. This is Cross Rubicon. See you later.